Hi, welcome to Board Gems, my weekly video series in which I cover an older board game gem. And this week I'm covering a game called Cities. So Cities was designed by Dutch designer Martin F. and was published by his own company, Emma Games, in 2008. In 2009, it was recommended by the Spiel des Jahres, Game of the Year jury. And there was, this is the, is this the Z-Man edition? Hold on. No, this is the, this is the original Emma, Emma Games then, I think. And in 2010, there was an English edition published by Z-Man. This one's multilingual. This one, uh, which is from Emma Games, has several languages in it, but uh, the Z-Man one, I think, is just English. It's for one to four players. It's actually for any number of players if you have multiple copies, because it's a literal multiplayer solitaire game. It has the, I guess what we might call the bingo style of game, in which one player will call out a, a number or, or just tell everybody what, what uh, piece to use, what tile to, to use. So one player is doing it randomly, but everybody else is finding the same one. So in the end, everybody is just doing the exact same thing and there's no interaction. You're just totaling up your scores at the end. Uh, lots of games do this. Cities is one of them. This box will play one to four players, um, but the single player variant is just play to a high score. Um, it's, I don't find that very satisfying, but yeah, it plays up to four out of the box and potentially more if you get multiple copies. Each round takes about 15 or 20 minutes to play, and you can play multiple rounds, but one game is one round, basically. And the box says ages eight and up. However, the game comes with three sets of rules, and the, the basic, basic rules, oh my god, five-year-old could probably play. It's really, really simple. Uh, we're going to go over the the most advanced rules, which are not that advanced, especially for, for a hobbyist. Um, but it's the most interesting, and it's the way we play here at Shea Boon. Um, I'll show you how that version plays, and then I'll go over why it's a gem for us. And I'll also talk about a little bit the new edition, which is uh, came out, I think, 2014, called Limes. So we'll talk a little bit about that as well, and the differences. To set up the game, each player gets a stack of 24 tiles. They're numbered 1 to 24. And as you can see, they have different colored spaces on them, four spaces, either yellow, green, orange, or blue. They also get seven pawns of their color, but the color doesn't really matter. Everybody's playing on their own little tableau. Now, one player is going to take their stack and shuffle them up. The other players are going to try to keep their tiles in order because what's going to happen is one player is going to be the caller. They're going to take their shuffled deck of tiles, they're going to draw one, call out the number that's printed on the middle, and then everybody will seek out that matching tile in their stack. And then we'll all play the same tile. So by the end of the game, all the players will have gotten exactly the same tiles in the exact same order. Just who did a better job, right? So after the player, the caller, shuffles up their stack, they'll draw the top three and call out the numbers. In this case, 3, 18, 19. So all the other players will find the 3, 18, and 19 in their stack, and then arrange them, arrange the three tiles such that their corners are touching. It doesn't have to be in this format, you can do something like this if you want. Now it turns pretty simple. The caller is going to draw the topmost tile, call out the number 17. Everybody finds a 17 and then places it, and then optionally places or moves a pawn. Now, when you place a tile, it has to touch either the edge or a corner, but you can't, you know, put it out in the middle of nowhere, right? It has to touch, but corners are fine. But you can't go past a 4x4 four four grid. We're going to play until there's 16 tiles in a 4x4 four four grid. So if somebody plays a tile and puts it uh, here, for example, that player can no longer play tiles on you know, further in this direction or this direction because it's already four tiles wide. After you place a tile, you may optionally place a pawn now, when you place a pawn from your supply, 
it would go on the tile you just played, and it must go on one of the four spaces, but cannot go on water. So it can go on any green, yellow, or orange space uh, that's on that tile. And if all your pawns are already on the board, and then you want to place a new tile, you can always pick up a pawn that already exists and put it down on the new tile as if it was in your supply. But instead of placing a new pawn, you can also move one. Instead of placing a new pawn, you take an existing pawn that's on the board and move it one space in any direction. Except again, not on the water. But diagonally is fine too. The goal is to get your pawns in areas on the board that will score the most points. And there's three different types of places the pawns can be that score points in different ways. The yellow spaces are tourist attractions. And a pawn in a yellow area, a yellow space, you look at all the connected yellow spaces connected to the space the pawn is on. In this case, we're not counting diagonal. And you will score one point for every yellow space and every orange space that's next to it. The orange spaces, the rules call them terraces. I usually call them restaurants. They usually show like a little dining patio or something. So the, the tourist attractions benefit from having restaurants near them. So if, for example, by the end of the game, it looks something like this, of course, there'd be a tile here. Well, let's go ahead and put a tile there, then. something like this, for example. This pawn would score three points for the yellow, and in addition, one, two, three, four, five, six points for the restaurants, the orange spaces, for a total of nine. The green spaces are parks. And a pawn in a park will score, similarly, one point for every space of the park and one, spo one spoice and one point for every water space, blue space, next to the park. So this pawn is going to score four points, three for the park and one because this water space is adjacent to it. These two water spaces are diagonal, they're not going to count. Now the terraces, the restaurants, those ones are interesting. The way the terraces work is unlike the yellow and the green spaces, the orange spaces, each space is its own area. So for example, this is not all considered to be one restaurant, they're all considered to be four different restaurants. A pawn on a restaurant will score a number of points equal to the number of green and blue spaces that that pawn can see in the four directions. Basically, in the restaurant, you're looking for a nice view. So you're looking at all the park and water spaces that you can see directly from the restaurant up until something blocks the view. And the yellow and orange spaces are buildings. They block the view. So right now, this pawn is scoring two for these two spaces and four for these four spaces. If there were more park and water spaces past the building here, this pawn would not be able to see them, so they wouldn't count. Pawns in the same area do not score twice. So in this case, one of the pawns would be scoring one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine points, but the other pawn wouldn't score any. So this is an example where you may want to take a pawn and move it so that it will score points in a different area. So do that until everybody has their 16 tiles played on the board. There'll be eight tiles left over. I'm gonna fast forward a little game just by myself, so I'll show you end game scoring. Okay, here's a finished game. So now we score. So each player scores for each one of their seven pawns. And by convention, as you score a pawn, you lay it down. So if we look at, for example, the green, this pawn is in green, four points for the park itself, plus one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine for the water adjacent to it. That's 13 points. This is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So where are we at? 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27. It's important to note that this one will score for both of the yellow ones that it's adjacent to. 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35. And now let's look at the terraces. 
the restaurants. This one has its view blocked by these. You can see one tile here and all of these ones. Again, I've also, let's look at it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. So unless I did my math wrong, which seems to happen a lot on this channel, but I scored something like 59 points, I think. That's it, you're ready to play Cities. You know, Cities is a very typical kind of bingo style game, the literal multiplayer solitaire. A lot of games get the multiplayer solitaire moniker, um, often used as a negative. I hate, I love games with interaction too. And some of the games that I've highlighted in this channel, including Santiago, for example, oh my God, tons of interaction, lots of, lots of uh, strategy, but it's not just strategy within the game rules, but it's also trying to decide other people's motivations and stuff. And that comes into it. Oh, I love that stuff. Cities doesn't have any of that. <laughs> Cities is a bingo style game, right? And there've been lots of games like this. Take It Easy is probably the most famous example. Uh, Fits, which I've covered on the channel before, in that uh, one player will kind of randomize the, the order of things and they will call out a piece or a, a tile or a card or whatever, or a number, and they'll call it out and everybody else finds that same thing. So then everybody has the same piece and then they all play it just to their own little tableau. Love that word, tableau. So there is no interaction, but honestly, rounds are super fast. If this was like a 90 minute game, I would be the first to complain about the lack of interaction. I want to play other people. I don't want to just play the game, play the game rules. I want to interact, but I don't require that of short games. Fillers, you know, this game takes 15, 20 minutes tops. It's just really quick and it's a nice, pleasant experience. If you do like games that I've mentioned, games like Take It Easy, like Fits, like High Score, there, there's a number of them, definitely seek this out too. This is definitely in that mold. And with the level three rules, which I taught you, the game is a nice little uh, brain teaser. I won't say a brain burner, but it's a brain teaser, right? It's a little puzzle. And you know, you get a tile and you're trying to figure out the best place to put it to benefit things that are already on the board, but there's also that spe speculation, right? Especially when it comes to the, to the terraces. The rules call them terraces. I usually call them restaurants. Uh, it's the, the orange spaces because those ones work differently than the other spaces and you, and they're potentially could be worth a ton of points. They benefit having a row, a line coming out from the restaurant, which is all parks and water, right? And th so basically you're looking for, the game is kind of thematic if you look for it, right? So the monuments, you know, the destinations, the tourist destinations benefit from having restaurants around them. Uh, the parks benefit from having water around them and the restaurants with the patios benefit from having a nice view. So I like the little thematic nod. It works, it works well enough for me anyway. So those restaurants, which the rules call the terraces, they're, they're potentially worth a lot of points, but they're a little bit speculative, right? I'm gonna put a pawn here, I'm on the terrace, and I'm hoping that later on I can get enough park and water kind of in those lines to, to benefit later. And the fact that in this game, you can actually play tiles connecting on the corners, not just on the edges, like it would be with most games, um, also feeds into that speculation a little bit. So you can actually connect a tile on the corner, so nothing is kind of next to it, but you're hoping later on you can get a tile to kind of connect them and, and make a good uh, scoring opportunity there. One nice touch is that some tiles are clearly better than other tiles, which you can do in this game. You can do in a multiplayer solitaire game where everybody's playing the same tile. Sometimes you'll get a bunch of bad tiles. Sometimes you'll get a bunch of good tiles. It's not unfair. Everybody's playing with the same set of rules. But the fact that some tiles are clearly better than other tiles really adds a little bit of, uh, I won't exaggerate it. It's not a huge amount, but it adds a bit of excitement, right? 
Um, there's one tile which is, you know, half of it is yellow and half of it is orange. That's a great tile. Half is green, half is water. That's a great tile. But one is like yellow, blue, water, blue, yellow, right? It's like a checkerboard pattern. But they're, they're things that don't um, interact with each other, right? In fact, they're, they actually limit each other. And so it's annoying when you get those tiles, sure, but everybody's playing by the same rules, right? And then later on, you get a good tile. I, I know like when, I, when my, my wife is usually the one to, to call out the numbers because she doesn't like to have to search. So she just randomizes it and she draws and I'm the one that searches in my pile. But anyway, so she'll call out. And if it's a good tile, she, you, can, you can hear the excitement in her voice, right? Oh, one, right? It's like, oh, one, one. I remember one's a good one you know, or something, and then, you know, find it, and then you're, you're adding it, and it's, it's, it's nice that some tiles are good and some bad, because you get excited when you get the good tiles, and you kind of curse when you get the bad tiles, but it's not unfair. It's not like I'm getting bad tiles and you're getting good tiles, right? It's, it's, everybody's playing with the same set of tiles, and it's just what you do with them. There isn't really a criticism I have with the game, um, I want to talk about the art a little bit. So I would think a lot of people looking at the game would probably complain about the art. <laughs> In the sense that it's very stark. It's functional, it works great, but it's very stark because the you know each tile, each square tile is composed of four squares and they're all a solid color with a little bit of artwork inside, but it's still a solid color. So in the end you have a you know a four by four grid or what would end up being an eight by eight grid of squares and they're just all greens and blues and yellows and oranges all just kind of mixed together and I can understand that people it's not super super pleasing to look at but it works great it's very clear and I will say that I do like the touch that each player is building a different city so each player has a different set of colored pawns but moreover each player has a different set of tiles they're all functionally the same tiles but they have different art on them so uh, uh, terrace a restaurant in Paris will look different than one in New York. You know, it's a little thing, but I appreciate that, right? It actually has a little bit of variety. You know, next time I'll play as Burley and I'll get a slightly different uh, look at the buildings. But generally I would appreciate a, a nicer looking game, but works great as it is. But you can't talk about cities without talking about limes. I mean, limes. Limes, it's Latin. Anyway. Limes is the reimagining, the re-implementation of cities, and this was originally published in 2014. I used to have it, and I got rid of it before I started this video series, so <laughs> I'm kind of kicking myself now. It's like, man, I wish I still had that game so I could teach that too and maybe do like a visual comparison or whatever, but there are photos. Go look it up on the internet if you want to get a visual comparison. Whereas Cities was published by his own company, Emma Games, uh, Limes was published by Abacus, I will say that, and it's important to note, that Limes, out of the box, is a two-player only game. Now, because this is a bingo style game, and bingo you can play with any number of people who can, you know, get a sheet and hear the numbers being called out, you can play any number of people with cities or Limes, I mean, not together, really, but um, they're almost the same component-wise, but not quite. A couple of the tiles are different. Anyway, you can play any number of people, assuming you have enough copies. But cities can play up to four people out of the box, whereas Limes can only play two. Now, okay, buy two copies of Limes. Why not? And then that's better than cities, right? Um, if it was better than cities, I wouldn't be talking about cities right now. I will say the designer likes Limes more. I think a lot of people would be completely fine with Limes and probably like it more than Cities or at least as much. So Limes is a re-implementation and perhaps to a lot of people an improvement. And it's much easier to find new certainly than Cities. So let's talk about the differences. So one thing is Limes comes with cards, not tiles. Now the cards are a little bit bigger than the tiles. Um, you're not playing cards, right? You're adding to a tableau and you're pushing kind of the cards together. 
to form a landscape. I find that works better with tiles than cards. You know, if you have the cards constantly bumping each other in the side, it can cause wear, but it's a minor thing. Certainly the art on the cards is much improved. At least it's more, it's less stark, certainly. Um, it's still very clear, you know, like what's forest, what's, I guess, field in this one, the yellow one, what's water. Still very, very clear, but the art is much more appealing uh, to my eyes. There are a few rules changes. So now you can place pawns on water. So now there's four different areas, four different ways to score. Um, you can no longer move pawns. Like normally in a game of cities, you would take, if you run out of pawns, like all your pawns are on the board and you want to put down a new one, you can just move one that you've already placed. In this one, you can't do that. Um, you can only move them. So instead of placing a new one, you can move one. But the pawns do move further, faster. I don't know how to say it. Because instead of just going space to space, it's now going kind of area to area. You know, so he, this pawn is in a forest area and it's adjacent to a, a water area. So one move moves it to the water area. It doesn't, you don't have to worry about which square it's on, basically. Um, there isn't a starting tile set up. So in cities you draw three tiles at the beginning and then you put them in a, a, a pattern in which they're all just touching on the corners. And Limez starts with the regular play right off the bat. So you're drawing, you're flipping over the first card or first tile, calling out the number and everybody is immediately putting that down. They could immediately put a pawn on it if they want to. Um, and you're not even allowed to place the tiles slash cards uh, just touching the corners anymore. They have to be adjacent side by side. Although I do believe that's a variant in Limez, in the rules of Limez, that you can touch on the corners. The scoring is very similar, but I like the scoring in Limez a little bit less, just personal preference. The thing about the scoring for me is, one thing I like about the scoring in cities is that, you know, yellow scoring relies on adjacent orange green scoring relies on adjacent blue, but the orange scoring relies on green and blue. In fact, yellow is bad for it. So even though yellow benefits from having orange next to it, orange does not benefit from having yellow next to it. In fact, that's a bad thing. Any of the other ones are fine. Well, not more orange, but definitely if you're on orange, you don't want to be next to yellow. So I like in cities the kind of the interplay um, that the terraces, the restaurants bring to the different styles. That's, that's still present in Limez, but I find that overlap, I don't know, a little less interesting, or maybe there's a little less overlap, right? So one field will benefit just from itself and doesn't really matter what's around it. That's a little less satisfying to me, but as personal preference, um, honestly, the production of Limez is great. Uh, no complaints at all. Um, I guess you could complain that it's cards instead of tiles. I think tiles is better, but cards are completely fine. The only real downside to Limez, uh, that's not just a matter of preference, because you can like City's rules more than Limez or vice versa, and either is fine, right? No one person is right or wrong. But it is a little unfortunate that it only comes with uh, enough cards for two players out of the box. I can understand why the publisher would do it. Just buy another copy of Limez if you want to play four players. Yeah, but who does that? Who does that really, right? At best, maybe you have a friend who also is interested in Limez, so they buy it too. And then when you get together with that, maybe that other couple, now you can play a four-player game just by combining both couples' copies of Limez. Like, I, I get it, that's totally true. I do happen to like the rules for cities a little bit more, just personal preference. I, I'm not even sure I'm really able to put it into words other than what I just said about kind of the interplay I, th I thought was a little bit more interesting slash frustrating in cities compared to Limez. Just personal preference though. But if you have no problems with a used edition and you think you might play with more than two players, just just get Cities. Just find a used copy of Cities. They're going for crazy cheap. You can easily get a copy of Cities, whether the original Emma Games edition or maybe more likely in English-speaking countries, the Z-Man edition. 
you'll play four players out of the box. As long as you can get past the look of it, some people won't like the look and the art of Limez is better. So, you know, you got to look at the how to play, see if you can accept the art. But if you don't mind used copies of games and you think you might want to play with more than two players, I say you seek out a copy of Cities. Cities is, in my opinion, as good as Limez. Plays four players right out of the box. And certainly you can get a copy of Cities easier and or cheaper than getting two copies of Limez. But Limez, if you only buy games new, seek out Limez. I think it had a printing just 2019, so it should be pretty easy to find. I don't know that they actually got distribution in English-speaking countries, but there's lots of like online retailers that import games, so you shouldn't really have a trouble if you're really looking for it to, uh, to find Limez. But like I said, if you don't mind getting used games, there's lots of people looking to trade away their copies of Cities, um, and I'm not one of them. Uh, I had Cities, I had Limez, I evalu- bleh. and I evaluated them both, and I played them both with, uh, with my wife, and we both decided we liked Cities more. And so Limez uh, got traded away. It's funny, I traded Limez along with two other two-player games. We had a math trade, right? And I put up Limez and two other two-player games. I think one was Jab, and I forget what the third one was. And I got, uh, I met up with the guy, it's a local math trade, so I met up with the guy, traded him, and he said, I only want Limez. <laughs> you can keep the other two, I don't want them. <laughs> so hey, Limez is good. I'm not, I, I'm not trying to dump on Limez at all. Limez is a good game. I'm just trying to put into words badly why cities worked better for us. In the end, hopefully I was able to share a little bit of the differences and why one might like cities more than Limez or vice versa. Thanks for watching. Remember, older games like cities don't stop being good just because new versions called Limez come out. Take care.